always try to avoid it if you cannot avoid it uh, if you're adding something or remove something also uh, Marco welcome back thank you Sven for inviting me uh, we were one of the first you know to film this podcast so we're let's say the pioneers of this podcast you know exploring how to how to structure everything and after almost i think two months we're recording now again yeah okay so time flies time flies definitely definitely um i wanted to ask you know how did the year start busy very busy as uh, always yeah thank you for asking that it's quite busy uh on all fields uh especially regarding the post podcast i think uh, it goes very well and we have uh re really interesting and um and uh, trustful people on the podcast and in the pipeline um, for the for the new episodes. So I hope uh, our um, uh, viewers will 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 be happy with uh, education uh, with with our uh, with the information that we provide through the podcast, and that they will learn something and they will um, avoid mistakes that maybe we that we made. Uh, or our clients mate uh, so yeah we'll we're flying all over the world we had guests from you know United States Germany we had a guest from other company here at our office so we're expanding we can say something like that uh, uh, our last episode actually our first episode uh, second episode I mean that we filmed was uh, why software products fail and we went through uh, various you know uh, reasons swipe products fail one of them you know was mismanaging the budget uh, not setting up process correctly and many other things uh, one of the things that we mentioned was scope creep uh, often overlooked you know it's it's it uh, it's in the shadows nobody's actually paying attention to that so uh, what is scope creep before we you know dig in deep uh, scope creep is a situation when you are adding uh, you are extending your product with extra features, with extra functionalities, um, by thinking that by adding that new feature, new functionality will make a huge difference uh, on the market with that first version. And uh, by doing that, you are keeping yourself in the comfort zone and you are avoiding uh, the, the clash with reality. Uh, where maybe you would uh, understand, you, you would uh, see that users, they don't like your product or maybe uh, they miss some, some other features. Uh, so basically you are, you are delaying that, that moment where you will basically uh, see the reality of, of your product. Yeah, so that's basically poorly defined scope of the project. And you need to define everything at the beginning. Is that the problem? I mean, does scope creep? Uh, is it a thing that uh, starts at the beginning of the project, or can it happen, let's say, in the middle? Because you know, everything needs to be stated correctly at the beginning of the project. It can. It can be both. At the beginning of the project is usually where um, you are so optimistic about what you can basically de uh, pro uh, uh, develop. A certain amount of time so you can basically you want to have like 10 features and all those kind of nice functionalities uh, that will make your product awesome uh, so that's uh, at the beginning and you always think okay let's just add this extra uh, functionality it it is it's only like 15 more days or maybe 20 20 more days what's 30 more days in in in, success, in successful startup. Um, so that's like uh, what happens at the beginning of the project. So instead of going with uh, three features, you are going, uh, you are planning to build eight features. Okay, so you already did certain amount of scope creep. During the product development, you have a bunch of conversations with investors, with um, other friends, other colleagues, uh, on the at the meetups, uh, you you meet other entrepreneurs, and uh, you get like a bunch of feedbacks 
from all of them. Uh, and from, from those feedbacks, you basically extract two or three features like, I need to add one more thing. I need to add these two features. It will make a difference. So you are doing like scope creep uh, during this, uh, during the product development. This is like ad, ad hoc scope creep. Of course, you have to be agile. So you don't want to basically uh, build your product uh, using waterfall methodology. You want to be agile. You want to, uh, uh, you want to iterate. You want to be uh, in position that you can change things on the go. But uh, it's like pretty tricky to, uh, it's, you have to basically control yourself to keep, keep and be agile and at the same time to, uh, to avoid scope creep. If you are adding new functionality, you have to basically remove uh, something that is existing because uh, by adding just uh, new functionalities, you will, be, uh, you will expand uh, the uh, basically delivery date. You will be uh, uh, more in the comfort zone and you will uh, avoid uh, basically clashing with real, real, reality. Yeah, you mentioned at the beginning that, you know, um, stakeholders, uh, stakeholders like to add features because they're convinced, you know, their product is going to be, uh, uh, is going to uh, rank better on the markets. Is, is that the case, let's say, with AI? Because you can, you know, nowadays you can always read, you know, um, our app or software is powered by AI. So, you know, is, is something like, let's say, AI necessary for, for, for a software? Hard to say. Uh, it's really hard to say. Uh, for some, uh, in, cer in certain uh, sectors, uh, in certain categories of the products, uh, it makes sense uh, to basically empower your product with AI uh, capabilities. Uh, in certain areas, maybe it doesn't make sense at the moment. It always, it's always like uh, a cons pros and cons. How much time and energy and money you have to invest, and uh, is this something that users uh, will basically approve? And, and they, are they and do, uh, do they are they going are they going to be happy about that? Um, so yeah, it's it's really hard to generalize. Uh, but uh, in any way, um, scope creep is um, is something that uh, you have to be uh, aware of uh, at the beginning when you're starting your product and basically you, you are, you have, you are doing just drawings and, uh, uh, during the entire process of product and development. Right. So, I mean, regarding AI, it, it might look cool if your software app has AI, but it might actually at the end be scope creep, you know, because it's not, it's not necessary for your software, you know, to function with AI. Okay. So, what would be the consequences of scope creep? I, 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 I probably can think, you know, a project can just fail and it can have many delays or something like that. Yeah, a scope creep, um, the usual and most known consequence is like time to market. Uh, so you will expand, you, you will basically add two or three months extra to, to reach the market, which is very uh, bad for the startup. You want to basically reach the market as soon as you can and basically get the feedback as, you, as, you, as, you, as soon as you can so you can do iterations on that uh, so-called feedback loop. Um, so, but uh, scope creep, um, um, the um, result of the scope creep can be technical depth also because uh, some uh, in in uh, in the process in the process of product development, if you're just maybe some you're going to add new features that maybe is in clash with something already existing in the in the app in the product, uh, there will may, it will basically uh, result in the technical depth. So the engineers and the team will make it work, but there will be like technical depth that you have to pay off uh, sometime in the future with interest, of course. Yeah, now that you mentioned technical debt, um, it's often also a scope creep overlooked, you know, um, 
some might say, okay, well, you know, we're going to get tactical debt here, but we're going to pay it off later. But you're going to have to pay it off later with, uh, with uh, higher rates, you know, and that might endanger your whole project. It's always uh, it's always a tricky situation, and um, of course uh, there will be always technical debt, um, but it, it depends uh, how big is the technical debt. Uh, sometimes it can be so huge that uh, maybe even going uh, um, starting the project uh, from the scratch is uh, cheaper. Uh, the, of course, those are like extreme situations. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you can, you you will have to refactor, and the refactoring is always tricky. It it it's, it is time consuming. Uh, you have to have, have good people for refactoring because of all the, all all potential regressions that you can uh, make uh, during that process. And uh, and for you as a businessman, uh, it's really hard to. Uh, choose refactor over new functionality so at the same time so in the future you will have the point where you will have to basically spend much of time on refactor without getting new functionality and uh, for the uh, people uh, uh, with the business mindset it's really hard to accept that but that's that's how it is yeah of course uh, whose whose job is it you know to uh let's say, spot technical debt. We, in one of our first episodes, we discussed about how to set up a team. So is it, let's say, well, let's, let's not play the blaming game, but who should look out for that? A project manager, a product manager, both of them, or, I mean, they should make, you know, the, the stakeholder or the client aware that, you know, this, if, if we add on this feature, we're gonna get time, time delays, uh, your budget mark get overrun. So who should look out for technical debt or scope creep? Um, so regarding technical debt, uh, the, the uh, people who are the first aware of it are, uh, I would say, designers and uh, uh, engineers who are working on, on, that, uh, on that modification. Uh, they are first aware of it. A designer is uh, aware of it uh, in the moment where maybe uh, they have to basically add uh, a new feature to the existing uh, flow, and uh, you, he can uh, they can do that, but it's not like a nice user experience. So in that moment, at that moment, uh, they are aware of the, uh, they are doing technical debt, and they have to basically at some point in the future they will have uh, they will have to come back at that user flow and basically polish that. Uh, that's like a first step. Uh, second step is someone has to develop that, so engineers are aware of it. Like, okay, uh, we didn't uh, assume that it's going to be uh, that way, so we don't have like a uh, uh, architecture for for this to adapt. Uh, so we have to do some kind of ad hoc. Um, modifications in the code, uh, exposing uh, different variables uh, or accessing certain stuff um, uh, more directly without uh, following certain process and uh, 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 software architecture and, and they, they, that will uh, create a technical debt and they will be aware of it and, um, and uh, they have to basically point out that to project manager and at the end to product manager, but the project manager is, uh, they, they, uh, and, uh, and then they have to discuss he, it. He or, he or she should basically be aware of it uh, uh, at, at some point, and then they should basically uh, point out that to the business stakeholders, like we have to, in three months uh, in the future, we have to invest one month you know, to refactor certain things, to polish, to, to, to stay, to stay in the game. Yeah. So it should be, let's say, immediately be reported to the stakeholders or you know, yeah. clients because yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna, it's not gonna be good if if you uh, if you uh, don't don't uh, report that to the client. Yeah. Um, you you have uh, a lot of years of experience in building uh, software. What's your personal experience with? We might say scope creep or technical debt. Have, I mean, there, there have 
been projects that you worked on and that they had probably a lot of tech technical debts or scope creep. What, what can you, you know, remember from your experience? Um, so I would say that you're not, you, you, you cannot uh, avoid technical debt. You cannot avoid it. It will happen in just, uh, in, in just uh, how, much, uh, uh, it, how much it grows and, and how you control that. So it's all about that. Uh, it's always going to happen because at the end, so let's say everything is like perfect. You, you as a person, you are not perfect. So whatever you did uh, or do today, uh, in the next month, you will do better. So there is, at, at that point, there is like some, some kind of technical debt. So te technical debt will always be there. It's uh, all about how you control that, how the how team control that technical debt and paying off that technical debt at some point in time in the future. Regarding scope creep, it's always the case also. It's really hard to avoid scope creep because uh, the, the people are very uh, creative to find arguments uh, why should something be, uh, why, why something should uh, be added uh, to the existing product or maybe to the uh, to the ex um, already known uh, roadmap uh, so it's really hard to avoid it um, but uh, i think good reflection uh, on that is very important so you can basically uh, always ask yourself uh, and uh, basically um, to control yourself and your team and ask yourself okay do we need early to do that can we may, may, may exclude some existing feature? Um, can we postpone that to the next version of the app? Or, or can we like postpone that for four months and then we will decide and that we will implement that. So just to make, to, to buy some time and to get feed, real feedback from the user. So all these kind of tricks help uh, basically maybe to avoid the jumping on the new feature which will create a uh, scope uh, How do you handle when, let's say, a client is in love, you know, with their idea and adding their features? Because, I mean, you have to really explain them in a nice way, uh, especially if they're a non-technical founder, you know. How do you, how do you explain to them? But if they're, you know, in love uh, with, with their uh, feature or, or, or uh, project, how do you explain to them, sorry, we can't do that because it's going to cost you too much money? Or too much time. Oh, uh, it's really hard. It's really hard. Sometimes we can. Uh, some sometimes we can't because uh, um, at the end we have to do what uh, a client wish uh, uh, client wants. So uh, we, we are here to aim uh, to aim and guide client to the to the certain uh, uh, situation. Uh, but at the end, uh, it's all about their decisions. We, can, we are here just to basically, basically mentor them and guide them and and uh, and propose uh, uh, known uh, information, uh, uh, basically uh, to avoid making uh, uh, to, to avoid uh, them to make the, the same mistakes. So the best way, let's say, to prevent scope creep is just to uh, clearly define the objectives at the beginning of the project. It might be difficult, you know, because I know that we talked in the in the past episode. Let's say on the uh, we can mention the business plan. You know, it can always change because the markets change. But in some way, you have to ha have some things clearly defined. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise it's going to be a mess. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there, there, there is like. Um interesting um uh, interesting um a comment uh, uh of my of my uh, by my founder by my art business partner peter uh he uh, he's like he's uh, he's running uh, the startup uh, our startup chic and um, he 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 points like you want to build mvp in waterfall and be agile after that so uh, it's so, um, these days it's all about Asia, all about Scrum, waterfall is so IBM stylish. <laughs> so no one wants 
to do anything uh, using waterfall. But if we step back, uh, it, you know, it, sometimes it really makes sense to deliver the first version of the product using waterfall methodology. Why? Because uh, that methodology um, um, basically makes you and force you to basically not do uh, to, uh, to avoid doing uh, those kind of things like scope creep, adding ad hoc features, changing uh, directions. So you want to go uh, fast as you can, and you want to basically uh, reach the market fast as you can. Uh, you have to basically um, uh, do some kind of blueprint of the of that first version, and basically you, you have to basically uh, develop that as soon as, you, as soon as you can, so you can get your market, you can get the uh, users, and based on that, you can do all the uh, all iterations, and uh, you can be uh, basically agile. And from that point, uh, you can basically have sprints. You can do all the all the agile stuff. You can uh, uh, change directions and uh, and um, and be basically pretty pretty fluid. But to to uh, to, uh, to deliver the first version, uh, having a nice blueprint and uh, using, let's call it waterfall way, uh, is uh, maybe pragmatic or way how to basically avoid all the all the all the potential problems. So you always have to be aware of what's going on because those fake features that you love might actually kill your project. Uh, so, in few sentences, your closing thoughts about scope creep. Always try to avoid it. If you cannot avoid it, uh, if you're adding something, or remove something also. Um, always, always think how to uh, reach the market as soon as you can, so you can uh, uh, get the feedback from the users and build on that, not on your opinions or opinions uh, of your investors and, and people around you. And uh, be aware that uh, scope clean can uh, result in also technical debt, which you have to pay uh, later with, uh, you know, with interest. And uh, uh, scope creep always uh, delay time to market and uh, and uh, time to market is uh, one of the most important things uh, in the when you're building a startup. You don't have time. Yeah, so clearly define everything, and you're not you're gonna have less problems than you know if you don't define everything. Okay, thank you very much for being here today, and I hope to see you next time soon. Thank you, Sen, for everything, and looking forward.